Okay, let's try this again. I tried recording this once and my computer was acting funny, so we're going to try again. Um, today's lesson is going to be about metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. I'm recording this so that we can um, watch it as asynchronous because you guys won't be seeing me today. Um, I'm hoping that this works out and that you'll be able to understand this concept with watching the live video. I'm going to send out an email um, to all my classes here in a minute to let you guys know to go watch it and um, what to do today in class. So yeah, here we go. Metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Um, as you can see here on the periodic table, it's colored. So all of your nonmetals are going to be on the right-hand side of this stair step, and all of your uh, metals are on the left-hand side. The only nonmetal not on the right-hand side is hydrogen. Um, the metalloids are this stair step in the middle of the periodic table, and we'll go over that more in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and play this video for you guys, and yeah. Have you ever stopped to think about how amazing your smartphone is? It has more computing power than the system NASA used to put humans on the moon. 50 years ago, no one could have imagined that you would be able to browse the web, listen to your favorite bands, and connect with your friends using a single object that fits in the palm of your hand. None of this would be possible without chemistry. About 91 of the 118 elements are metals. Around 20 are used to build your phone. Most metals share distinct physical properties that make them ideal for manufacturing smartphones. Metals have luster, which means they reflect light. Smartphone designers use this property to market smartphones as a sleek and modern piece of technology. Metals form strong crystalline structures, which contributes to durability. If you accidentally dropped your phone, the metal shell wouldn't break, but you may have to live with a cracked screen. Unlike glass, metals are malleable, which means they can be hammered or pressed permanently out of shape without breaking or cracking. Your smartphone can distinguish between a tap, scroll, or zoom because of metal's ability to conduct electricity so well. Modern smartphones utilize capacitive touch screens. The screen contains a sheet of glass with thin lines of a highly conductive metal compound arranged in a grid pattern. At each intersection, an electrostatic field is generated and registered as neutral. When you touch the screen, a tiny bit of electrical charge enters your finger, which disrupts the field and produces a signal. Metals are ductile meaning they can be pulled into wires. Whenever you interact with your phone, a signal is transmitted through a complex highway of wires to your processor. Your processor is like the brain of your smartphone. Similar to the human brain, it receives signals from different parts of your phone and translates them into instructions for action, like opening YouTube so you can watch the latest video of baby goats in pajamas. Like metals, metalloids have luster. But unlike metals, they're not malleable or ductile, so they break apart easily. Metalloids are a crucial component of your processor because they're semiconductors, meaning they conduct electricity, but not quite as well as metals. Semiconductors allow electricity to pass through your phone's transistors in a controlled manner. If you used metal, too many of your transistors would activate, causing your processor to malfunction. The properties of nonmetals are the opposite of metals. They're brittle solids or gaseous at room temperature, and they're not malleable, conductive, or ductile. Their specific properties are so diverse, they don't have widespread applications like metals. One application is responsible for powering up your phone. In a battery, there's a positive electrode, usually made of a lithium compound, and a negative electrode, usually made of carbon, a nonmetal. When the battery is charging, the positive electrode gives up some of its lithium ions, which move through to the negative electrode. When the battery is being used, the lithium ions travel back to the positive electrode, producing the energy needed to do things like map directions to a new restaurant in town. By utilizing the general properties of metals, metalloids, and nonmetals, we can continue to create incredible advancements in technology. Next time you text your friend about meeting up for pizza, take a moment to appreciate the complex chemistry responsible for making it happen. 
We wouldn't be able to create these videos without your support. If you like what you see, like and subscribe to our channel. If you love YSI and would like to see it grow, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Okay, so that was just a brief introduction to it. We're going to go over more right now. Metals. There are lots of metals on the periodic table. Um, here are some examples. You got nickel, rubidium, gold, and copper. When you get to this part of the Nearpod, it's going to be a um, sharing activity. What you'll do is I want you to post an image of a metal that was not listed on the previous slide. So none of these four metals. So you can go down here to your box where it says share thoughts and images. You can click on the image button and you can search up metal element. Um, well, there's not really anything there. So let's see, metal on the periodic table. Um, no, don't do that. Um, Let's see. I'm not really seeing anything. Um, I'm trying to figure out a search that would be better. Let's see. If you just put metal. Show more. Oh, you know what, let's put metal element and then so show more. You can always click show more. Um, there's lots of images. Just try to put something that makes sense. Or if you know of another metal that wasn't there, so like nickel wasn't there. Um, you just click on the image, save, and then down here it says post. Um, there's lots of other images that weren't there. So we got, actually nickel was there, I'm sorry. Nickel, rubidium, gold, copper. I think titanium's not here. Um, if you look at your, like if you open up a periodic table, so let me go back to this slide. If you open up a periodic table, any of these images here are going to be um, metals, any of the blue. So if you look at a periodic table in another tab, you can see um, that all of these are metals and you can look up any one of these metals. Try not to do um, nickel, rubidium, or copper. So metals, and if you look at this slide too, you can see that there are all kinds of different metals here. Metals appear to the left of the dark zigzag line on the periodic table. Most metals are solid at room temperature. Here are some properties of metals. Metals have shiny metallic luster. So luster is one of the properties we're going to be looking at to determine if an object is metal, non-metal, or metalloid. For a metal, you're going to, it's going to be shiny metallic. So you're gonna have an open-ended question here. And how do you think we could test to see if an object is shiny or not? I want you to answer, like if you had a piece of um, anything in front of you, um, how do you think, what would be the test we would use to see if it was shiny or not? And I want you to click on the box and type in your answer. And once you've typed something, um, there's gonna be a submit button down here in the right somewhere. Um, and you're going to hit submit. Make sure you submit your answer because I'll go back and look at them. Uh, properties of metals ductile. Metal can be drawn into wire. So you can actually shape metal into wire. That's what ductile means. So how do you think that we might be able to test to see if an object is ductile? Um, how, how would you see if an object can be shaped into wire? You're going to answer that and hit submit. Malleable. Metals can be hammered into sheets. When I say hammered into sheets, it means when you have a piece of that metal sitting in front of you, um, you need to be able to test to see if it can be hammered into sheets. So you're going to have an open-ended question here. 
and it's going to also ask you how do you think you can we can test to see if something is malleable some of these things you guys can actually open up another tab and google search if you want um, to see what the test might be and that way that might help you answer the question so if you need to google search to see how we test to see if something is malleable you can do that too um, another property is that metals are good conductors of electricity and heat. Last year in fifth grade, you should have learned what a conductor and um, an insulator were. A conductor is something that actually lets electricity and heat move really easily. <coughs> that means it's going to move through it really quickly. Um, you should have done some tests last year in fifth grade on conductivity. So how do you think we could test to see if something was a conductor? You're going to answer that and hit submit. Um, now we're on to non-metals. All of your non-metals are going to be on the right-hand side of the periodic table. I think there's one hydrogen is on the left-hand side. So you're going to look at these um, four elements here, and then we're going to have another, um, actually I may not have put it on there, but as you can see, the non-metals occur to the right of the zigzag. The only one that's not is hydrogen, which is up here on the left. Many non-metals are gases at room temperature. Properties of non-metal, they are the exact opposite of metals. They do not have a shiny luster. They're going to be dull. They're going to be brittle, so they're the exact opposite of metals. They're not ductile or malleable. They're brittle, so they break easily. Um, they also have a low melting point and they're not good conductors. So non-metals are the exact opposite of metals. Metalloids are kind of weird because they hold a lot of the same properties as uh, metals and non-metals. They are going to be on this stair step here. So that they're going to be um, silicon, um, germanium, they go on the zigzag line. Metalloids have properties of both metals and non-metals. So in a test question, if you see something that says it's a, it's brittle, but it's a, it's a semiconductor, um, that's going to be your best bet to know if it's a metalloid. Um, they can be shiny or dull. They can, they're okay. So what they're called is they're semiconductors. And that's your biggest clue if something is a metalloid is if you see the word semiconductor. Remember that, it will be important. If you see the word semiconductor, then you know it's a metalloid. Um, metals can be malleable um, or ductile, but they're not always. So this table right here is actually gonna be your best bet to learn the uh, properties of these. So metals are, for luster, metals are shiny, non-metals are dull, and metalloids can be either or. Um, Metals are very malleable. They can be hammered into sheets. Uh, Nonmetals are brittle. They break. Metalloids can be both malleable or brittle. Metals are good conductors. Nonmetals are poor conductors. They don't, they don't move electricity and heat. Metalloids are what we call semiconductors. So they're partial. They can do, they, um, they move electricity, but not very quickly. Uh, metals are usually solid at room temperature, uh, some are magnetic, um, non-metals can be solid liquid or gas, and metalloids are solid at room temperature. Just remember that word semiconductor. There's going to be a time to climb at the end of this. Um, you're just going to do the time to climb and then you'll be done with the Nearpod. You also need to go do the, um, the do now activity and the exit ticket. And that is it for today.